Have you ever felt paralyzed or had hallucinations as you're falling asleep or waking up? This is called sleep paralysis. And if you've ever experienced it, it can be terrifying. I've actually experienced sleep paralysis a few times in my life, especially as a sleep deprived medical resident, and it was pretty scary. So in this video, we're talking all about sleep paralysis. If you're interested in sleep and mental health, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I am a physician specializing in integrative psychiatry and sleep medicine. Every video also contains tips for healthcare practitioners and is eligible for CME credits. And physicians, if you ever see patients who have sleep issues, go ahead and grab my free clinical sleep mini course that is also eligible for CME and it's jam packed with high yield clinical information you can use in your practice. You can grab it at intrabalance.com forward slash doctors. The link to the course is also in the video description. This video is part three in our four part series on parasomnias. Videos one and two were on nightmare disorder. What is sleep paralysis? Well, just like nightmare disorder, sleep paralysis is a type of REM parasomnia. It usually happens as you're falling asleep or as you're coming out of sleep, and it involves a brief episode of atonia or loss of muscle tone, so you feel paralyzed. It's often associated with hallucinations, which are usually visual hallucinations, so things that you see, or auditory hallucinations, things that you hear. And what's happening is that it's thought to be a mixed state of consciousness. So you're not fully asleep, you're not fully awake, you actually get this wakefulness intermingling with REM sleep. And REM sleep is characterized by that atonia or that loss of muscle control, where you're naturally paralyzed in REM sleep. That is actually how uh, sleep is supposed to happen. We're supposed to be paralyzed during REM sleep so we don't act out our dreams. But what happens with sleep paralysis is that we've got this REM and wakefulness kind of intermingling so you're awake but you're paralyzed and then you're having these dreamlike hallucinations and that is why it can feel so frightening. Now it usually lasts a few minutes and typically it stops on its own, but sleep paralysis can also be interrupted by somebody talking to you or somebody touching you, or even if you're like trying really hard to move, that can also wake you up out of sleep paralysis. Now breathing is not affected during episodes of sleep paralysis and it usually happens to people sleeping in the supine position, so sleeping on their back. It's thought that sleep paralysis is pretty common, but is underreported. And a lot of people don't report it to their doctors or to other people because they're worried that it might make them seem crazy, that they're having these hallucinations and these weird experiences. But sleep paralysis is actually quite common. Some studies estimate that up to 40% of people have experienced sleep paralysis. Other studies say that it's as low as five or six percent, so we really don't know, but we do know that it is actually a relatively common experience. What does sleep paralysis actually feel like? When somebody's experiencing this, they are conscious to a certain extent, they're in that mixed state, but they can't move and they can't talk and it can feel really scary. And they might feel like there's somebody in their room or somebody's watching them. They might experience physical sensations like chest pressure or a sensation that they're flying. And it's not always scary actually. Sometimes people experience a feeling of euphoria or bliss during episodes of sleep paralysis. It's been suggested that there are three main types of sleep paralysis. There is the intruder type, the incubus, and then unusual bodily experiences. The intruder type is characterized by feeling like there's somebody in your room or there's a presence there and is often associated with the visual and auditory hallucinations. The incubus type is characterized by a feeling of pressure in the chest and maybe even a feeling of suffocation or like it's hard to breathe or even a feeling of pain. And then the unusual bodily experiences type is characterized by a feeling of floating or flying or feeling like you're out of your body or even experiencing a feeling of bliss. It's so interesting with sleep paralysis because it's been described across cultures for thousands of years and many cultures have their own description of supernatural events that are actually likely attributable to sleep paralysis. For example, in the Inuit culture, sleep paralysis is attributed to spells of shamans that make it hard to move and that invoke a shapeless presence in the room. In the Japanese culture, there are descriptions of vengeful spirits that suffocate their enemies during sleep. And in numerous European countries, there's been descriptions of a malevolent horse that actually preys on sleepers at night and rides on their chest and suffocates them. And it's thought that this is where the word nightmare comes from. 
In terms of modern folklore and modern supernatural experiences, some scholars have proposed that reports of UFO abductions and alien encounters are actually episodes of sleep paralysis. If information like this is interesting and useful for you, go ahead and click the like button. Okay, what causes sleep paralysis? The most common cause is sleep deprivation. It can also be caused by irregular sleep-wake cycles like jet lag and circadian rhythm misalignments and also shift work like what I experienced when I was a medical resident working shifts and I was sleep deprived. Those types of situations will make you more prone to experiencing sleep paralysis. Stress may also be a cause and it's thought to start happening more most frequently during the teenage years and it's thought that sleeping in the supine position or on your back is also a predisposing factor. There are higher rates of sleep paralysis in people with obstructive sleep apnea or anxiety, panic, and PTSD. It can also be caused by REM rebound from withdrawal from substances like alcohol or other substances and uh, medications like antidepressant medications. Is it dangerous to experience sleep paralysis? Well, in and of itself, it's considered a benign condition. There are no significant complications from this. However, if it is very disturbing and distressing and causing anxiety or causing sleep avoidance, then that can lead to a host of other issues like worsening sleep deprivation or worsening um, daytime functioning, daytime sleepiness, and even worse symptoms of anxiety or panic or PTSD. How do you treat sleep paralysis? Well, step one is to identify the root cause. As we discussed, sleep deprivation is the primary cause, but you also want to rule out narcolepsy because sleep paralysis could be a symptom of that, but it can also be isolated and not related to any sleep disorder. And you also want to rule out obstructive sleep apnea. Because sleep deprivation is the most common cause, you want to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. It's important to ensure that bedtimes and wake up times are consistent. It's a good idea to avoid sleep disruptors like alcohol or caffeine. Creating a relaxing bedtime routine is important as well. And if you're traveling across time zones or working shifts, then it might be a good idea to lie on your side rather than on your back, as sleep paralysis is thought to happen more frequently when lying on your back. In situations where the sleep paralysis episodes are really disturbing, cognitive behavioral therapy can be helpful. And then reassurance. Um, if you're seeing somebody who has sleep paralysis, just reassuring them that it's a benign condition and there's certain lifestyle factors that can be very effective can be incredibly reassuring for people to hear. Here's a specific tip for healthcare providers. There are five differential diagnoses to consider in patients who complain of sleep paralysis. Differential number one is neuropathies, like neuropathies of the radial or median or ulnar nerves, which can be experienced as paralysis of a limb during sleep. Now, the main differentiating factor here is that it, the neuropathies would involve only one limb, whereas sleep paralysis involves the trunk and all the limbs. Differential number two is cataplexy, which is characterized by loss of muscle tone and paralysis, but it happens during wakefulness, and it's typically precipitated by emotion. Differential number three is atonic seizures, but these typically happen during wakefulness. Differential number four is nocturnal panic attacks, but these are not typically associated with paralysis. Differential number five is hypokalemic periodic paralysis. This can happen during wakefulness or during rest, but it usually lasts for hours. It's typically associated with carbohydrate intake and associated with hypokalemia. What are your biggest takeaways from this video? Let me know in the comments.